Component sizing. It is often beneficial to set several related components, such as buttons and modal dialogs, to be the same size for visual consistency. To demonstrate this, we'll add 4J buttons to our contact editor form that will allow us to add, edit and remove individual entries from our contact list. Afterwards, we'll set the four buttons to be the same size, so they can be easily recognized as offering related functionality. To add, align and edit the display text of multiple buttons, in the palette window select the J button component. Move the J button over the right edge of the email address J text field in the lower J panel. When the guidelines appear, indicating that the J button's baseline and right edge are aligned with that of the J text field, shift click to place the first button along the J frame's right edge. The J text field's width shrinks to accommodate the J button when you release the mouse button. Move the cursor over the top right corner of the J list in the lower J panel. When the guidelines appear, indicating that the J button's top and right edges are aligned with that of the J list, shift click to place the second button along the J frame's right edge. Add two additional J buttons below the two we already added to create a column. Make certain to position the J buttons such that the suggested spacing is respected and consistent. If you forget to release the Shift key prior to positioning the last J button, simply press the Escape key. Set the display text for each button. Click the button, pause and then click again. Enter Add for the top button, Edit for the second, Remove for the third and As default for the fourth. Alternatively, you can edit a button's text by right-clicking the button and choosing Edit Text. The J button components snap into the positions designated by the alignment guidelines. The width of the buttons changes to accommodate the new names. Now that the buttons are positioned where we want them, we'll set the four buttons to be the same size for visual consistency, as well as to clarify that they are related functionally. To set components to the same size, select all four J buttons by pressing the Ctrl key while making your selection. Right-click one of them and choose same size, same width from the pop-up menu. The J buttons are set to the same size as the button with the longest name. Often, it is necessary to cluster multiple components under another component, such that it is clear they belong to a group of related functions. One typical case, for example, is placing several related checkboxes below a common label. The GUI Builder enables you to accomplish indenting easily by providing special guidelines, suggesting the preferred offset for your operating system's look and feel. In this section, we'll add a few J-Radio buttons below a J-Label that will allow users to customize the way the application displays data. To indent J-Radio buttons below a J-Label, add a J-Label named Mail Format to the form below the J-List. Make certain the label is left aligned with the J-List above. In the Palette window, select the Radio Button component from the Swing Controls category. Move the cursor below the J-Label that we just added. When the guidelines appear, indicating that the J-Radio button's left edge is aligned with that of the J-Label, move the J-Radio button slightly to the right until secondary indentation guidelines appear. Shift-click to place the first radio button. Move the cursor to the right of the first J-Radio button. Shift-click to place the second and third J-Radio buttons, being careful to respect the suggested component spacing. Make certain to release the Shift key prior to positioning the last J-Radio button. Set the display text for each radio button by clicking the button, pausing and then clicking again. Enter HTML for the left radio button, plain text for the second and custom for the third. Three J radio buttons are added to the form and indented below the mail format J label. Now we need to add the three J-Radio buttons to a button group to enable the expected toggle behavior in which only one radio button can be selected at a time. This will, in turn, ensure that our contact editor application's contact information will be displayed in the mail format of our choosing. To add J-Radio buttons to a button group, 
In the palette window, select the button group component from the Swing Controls category. Click anywhere in the GUI Builder design area to add the button group component to the form. Notice that the button group does not appear in the form itself, however, it is visible in the inspector's other components area. Select all three of the J-Radio buttons in the form. In the Properties window, choose Button Group 1 from the Button Group Property combo box. Three J-Radio buttons are added to the button group. Finishing up. Now we need to add the buttons that will enable users to confirm the information they enter for an individual contact and add it to the contact list or cancel, leaving the database unchanged. In this step, we'll add the two required buttons and then edit them so that they appear the same size in our form, even though their display texts are different lengths. If the lower J panel is extended to the bottom edge of the J-frame form, drag the bottom edge of the J-frame down. This gives you space between the edge of the J-frame and the edge of the J panel for your OK and Cancel buttons. In the Palette window, select the button component from the Swing Controls category. Move the cursor over the form below the Email J panel. When the guidelines appear, indicating that the J button's right edge is aligned with the lower right corner of the J frame, click to place the button. Set the display text for each J button. Enter OK for the left button and cancel for right one. Notice that the width of the buttons changes to accommodate the new names. Set the two J buttons to be the same size by selecting both, right-clicking either, and choosing same size, same width from the pop-up menu. The J button components appear in the form, and their corresponding nodes are displayed in the inspector window. The J button components code is also added to the form's source file, which is visible in the editor's source view. Each of the J buttons are set to the same size as the button with the longest name. Button. The last thing we need to do is delete the placeholder text in the various components. Note that while it is typical to remove placeholder text as you lay out your forms, it can be a helpful technique to avoid problems with component alignments and anchoring relationships. As you go through the form, select and delete the placeholder text for each of the J text fields. We'll leave the placeholder items in both the J combo box and J list for a later tutorial. Now that you have successfully built the contact editor GUI, you can try your interface to see the results. You can preview your form as you work by clicking the Preview Form button in the GUI Builder's toolbar. The form opens in its own window, allowing you to test it prior to building and running. This concludes the Designing a Swing GUI in NetBeans IDE tutorial. Thanks a lot and see you soon!